let's take a look at the different kinds of saws available and the applications they're designed for. Let's start off with circular saws. A circular saw is one of the most common household power tools, and I doubt there's a carpenter out there who doesn't use their circular saw just about every day. Circular saws come in several different blade diameters, the most common being seven and a quarter inches. Circular saws are used to make ripping and cross cuts in a variety of materials. Different types of materials can be cut with different types of blades. There are two basic types of circular saws. The standard circular saw, sometimes called a sidewinder saw, is the most common. It's a low maintenance compact saw with the motor set perpendicular to the blade. Standard circular saws tend to be lightweight. They're available in corded and cordless versions, and they work great for almost all applications. The other type is a worm drive circular saw, which is more specialized. A worm drive circular saw has the motor set in line with the blade, and it has an oil-filled crankcase that requires more maintenance. It tends to be heavier than a standard circular saw, but since the blade is on the left side, it also offers a better sight line to the cutting surface for more precise cutting. Worm drive circular saws deliver more torque because they use specialized gears, the specifics of which differ by manufacturer to transfer power to the blade. More torque helps keep the blade from stalling in the middle of a cut in dense materials. Both sidewinder and worm drive circular saws are rated by amperage, with better saws tending to feature higher blade RPMs for faster cutting. Our next type of power saw is the table saw. Table saws are used for ripping, cross-cutting, and miter cutting. As the name implies, the saw is built into a table. A circular saw blade, usually 10 inches in diameter, extends up through the tabletop. The blade can be raised, lowered, or even tilted, depending on the size of the material being cut. Table saws are available in several sizes, from bench top models designed to fit on an existing workbench, to large contractor models that are freestanding with built-in legs, to even larger saws mounted on immobile cabinets. The larger the motor, the more efficiently the saw will cut thicker materials. Most bench top and contractor table saws range from a low end of one and a half horsepower to a very heavy duty model with a five horsepower motor. Most cabinet saws will range from three quarter horsepower to one and three quarter horsepower. All table saws, regardless of size, have a fence to help guide the materials onto the blade, making for an extremely straight cut. Now let's consider miter saws, which come in several variations. The simplest type of miter saw is called simply a miter saw. Miter saws are used for making repeated mitered or straight cross cuts. They can be used for metal cutting if the appropriate blade is used. A miter saw has a circular blade that's pivoted to the desired angle and brought down onto the material to be cut. The base of the saw is a turntable with a built-in compass scale. Pivot the blade to the desired angle and you can make the same cut accurately every time. The turntable base stops automatically at some of the most common angles. Before we go on, I should mention that sometimes you'll hear people refer to a miter saw as a chop saw, but a chop saw is actually a whole different type of saw. While it resembles a miter saw, a chop saw usually has a larger blade which doesn't pivot. It's usually used for cutting metal. A more complex miter saw is the compound miter saw. A compound miter saw has the same features as a regular miter saw, but the blade can also be beveled to the left and sometimes to the right, creating compound miter cuts. Most have blades that tilt in only one direction. They're called single bevel compound miter saws, but other higher end models have blades that pivot in both directions, which is why they're called double bevel compound miter saws. One last miter saw variation is the sliding compound miter saw. It has a mechanism that allows the saw to slide into the material, making it ideal for cutting wider lengths. The saws we've talked about so far all have circular blades and are designed for repeated, relatively simple cuts. Now let's look at a couple of saws that are ideal for hard to reach areas and more intricate cutting jobs. A jigsaw, also known as a saber saw, cuts with an up and down blade motion. It's ideal for making curved or irregular cuts. Most models can cut through one inch thick hardwood or up to an inch and a half in softwood. Better jigsaws have longer blade strokes, orbital action, and variable speed. Orbital action provides a more aggressive, faster, and rougher cut. 
Some low-end jigsaws have a scrolling feature, allowing the user to turn the blade while cutting by turning a knob on top of the saw instead of turning the entire tool. Some jigsaws also have bases that tilt, allowing the saw to make bevel cuts. Finally, a reciprocating saw is a popular tool used for demolition and rough-in work. With the right blade, a reciprocating saw can cut through practically anything. It works great in tight quarters, cutting with a back-and-forth motion. Recip saws, as they're commonly called, are available with a variety of features, and better ones also have the option of cutting with orbital action. Orbital action should only be used in wood. Most recip saws have variable speeds, and the best ones have quick-release blades and adjustable shoes to provide stability and guide depth. A removable shoe is desired when fitting the blade into tight spaces. Some recip saws also have adjustable handles for comfort when cutting in tight areas and at awkward angles. Okay, now that we've talked about some of the more common power saw varieties, we need to discuss the saw blades that go into them. Every power saw is designed for a specifically sized blade, so check the owner's manual for the correct size. Different blades have different numbers of teeth on them. The number of teeth is what determines the kind of cut the blade makes. A blade with fewer teeth is generally designed to quickly cut through the material, resulting in a quick but rough cut. Low tooth count blades also have a large gullet, which is the area cut out of the blade plate in front of the teeth. The gullet provides a place for the wood chips to go, and it helps control the feed rate of the material. A large gullet means larger wood chips and a faster cut. The more teeth the blade has, the smoother the finished cut will be. High tooth count blades tend to cut more slowly, which means a more precise finished cut with minimal splintering or tearing. These blades have as many as 60 to 80 teeth and a smaller gullet to help prevent the material from being fed into the saw too quickly, thus preventing rough splintered cuts. Blades also have different tooth grinds. Each tooth is ground to an optimal design depending on what type of cut the blade is designed to make. For example, a blade with a flat top grind, also known as FTG, is generally used for ripping. This is one of the most popular tooth configurations. Since the idea is for a rip cut to be made with the grain of the wood, the material generally cuts easier than in a cross cut. As a result, the square tooth configuration is designed to make rip cuts quickly and efficiently. Then there's alternate top bevel, also known as ATB, which is specifically designed for cross cutting. Alternate top bevel means that each tooth alternates between a right and left hand bevel. The combination of the left and right bevel creates a knife-like effect on both sides of the blade. The result is a smoother, cleaner cut than you'll get from a blade with a flat top grind. This is also a very common tooth grind, especially amongst framers. Hook angle is another consideration when choosing a saw blade. The hook angle refers to the angle of the blade tip in reference to the rotation of the blade. A positive hook angle means that the teeth are tipped toward the direction of the blade's rotation. A blade with a high positive hook angle, that is anything greater than 20 degrees, makes an aggressive, fast cut. Rip blades usually have high hook angles. A negative hook angle, then, means that the tips of the teeth are away from the rotation. It's also possible to have a zero degree hook angle where the teeth line up with the center of the blade. A negative or zero degree hook angle helps slow down the feed rate of the material and helps prevent binding and climbing where the blade attempts to pull itself out of the cut. These blades are common on miter saws. The final blade component we'll talk about today is the kerf. The kerf refers to the thickness of the tooth, or more accurately, to the slot that the blade cuts in the material. The kerf of a blade is determined by the thickness of the teeth. A full kerf blade is thicker, so the saw has to work harder to make the cut as it's cutting through more material. Technological advances have made thin kerf blades very popular, especially for lower powered tools. Cutting with a thin kerf blade means that the saw doesn't have to work as hard because it's cutting through less material. For the most part, our blade discussion has focused on designs for either cross-cutting or ripping. However, most customers will be making both types of cuts frequently. Instead of choosing one blade for cross-cutting and another for ripping, combination blades are available. Popular combination blades have teeth that are arranged in groups of five, four alternate top bevel teeth, and one flat top tooth with the pattern repeated around the rest of the blade.